perfectly proportioned and exquisitely presented. Perfect for the handsome, lonely young bachelor professional. So this is the study? That's right. The first port of call en route to La Boudoir. Is there enough room out front for you, sir? Are there plenty of PowerPoints? Enough electricity to set your sheets alight. Damp. What are you suggesting? There's a damp patch up there on the ceiling, look. Look, if you're not interested, you can get lost. Flossing the bullet, pushing a five double up, leaning to the side straight, clucking her up. Looking very smart, driving along in my new Benz, and suddenly I spot a nice young lady. Ice rockin' brick, chopping gun shopping, there ain't no stopping me when I got a hoochie back on my mind. When I'm wearing lots of diamonds and I put the narcotics in a safe place and selected a suitable firearm, I'm very preoccupied thinking about a nice young lady's bottom. So I bust a left on sunset, go and get a room. Don't want to be a fella like Joey Bull. Get the right bitch, hit the light switch, here we go. Tap that ass like this, really though. So I turn left onto Sunset Boulevard, and then suddenly I take a nice young lady to a really nice hotel, and we begin sexual intercourse. I miss the clearing. I'm entering the shadowy realm of the afterlife. There's a woman figure with me who has a message for you. Who female has passed to the other side recently? My mother. Yes. She says you're a slag. Does that make sense? What? No. She's saying she's your mother and you're a dirty slag with no dress sense. I know she didn't like my sleeveless vest, but my mum would never have said that. Yes, she says, a slag like you, Karen, would turn a trick on a Friday night for half a bag of chips. A real minger of a scrubber. And quite frankly, she's glad not to be near your crack-infested life anymore, Karen. Karen? Yes, she said a fat slag like you, Karen, should really stay... I'm Rebecca. Not Karen? No. Rebecca. Whoops. Oh, my... Quick! Give me the phone. Oh, you want me to give you the phone now, do you? Oh, there's a woman outside. She's been run over. Oh, a woman. I might have guessed. She needs an ambulance. She needs our help. Oh, she needs you, does she? And what about me? All she has to do is get run over and suddenly she's the centre of attention. Shush, I'm on the phone. I do know. I do know what somebody on the phone looks like is that thing placed against your stupid, lying, cheating face. Hello? Hello? Where yes. is she, then? I'd like to report... Two accidents. I'm seeing a figure. A woman. Has anyone close to you passed to the other side recently? My dad. Oh, it is your father. I was confused by the long hair. My dad didn't have long hair. Yes, but the, the hair continues to grow long after death. And he was a short man. Over six foot. He's standing up now. He's a, actually a rather heavily built fellow. Beanpole. People used to call him Beanpole. He was removing his bulky coat to reveal his slender physique. He's saying he's happy now. That's a first. He was a miserable old sod most of the time. As happy as he can be, considering the tragic circumstances of his death. Having sex with his secretary? Our sex life, it's not what it was, is it? Your performance has consistently failed to satisfy projections. Following recent inflations, you have, not to put too fine a point on it, been getting slack. I'd be left with no choice but to outsource my sexual needs to the private sector. They offer a far more streamlined performance, they take a directly hands-on approach, and their attitude towards head management is quite frankly superb. Is there anything you'd like to say? I think you're being jolly unfair. Thank you for watching my live webcam. If you've just tuned in by accident, I'm Jelly, and I'm here to tell you all about my amazing life.
Wow. Where to start? My friends are brilliant. They say I'm crazy, absolutely mad, because I'm always up for anything, always having a laugh. <laughs> My friend Brian, he's hilarious, but the other day I got an anonymous letter to say Brian had been killed in a car crash. But I recognised his handwriting. <gasps> I said you can't pull the wool over my eyes, matey. Besides, you don't even have a car. I'm a bit worried about my friend Wendy. I know I shouldn't be saying this, and I don't like to gossip, but I think she might have nits. Because she's always washing her hair whenever I ask her out these days. Then there's my friend Sal. She's so cool. She's always changing her address a lot, which can be confusing. But I always manage to track her down. <laughs> Sir Bethany, the room into which you will lead your conquest as you breathlessly remove each other's clothes with your teeth. Is the bed included? Everything is included. It's a high sprung, high tension, king size mattress and will take whatever you throw. Ooh. Mm, not very private. Oh no. You could walk up and down naked in this room. Believe me. Is that it? You've only seen the front. I'm sure you'd be interested in seeing what the rear passage has to offer. Uh, excuse me, Gov. Have you got a bit of change for a cup of tea? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy. Next week, my friend Brian has promised to take me extreme abseiling. It's like normal abseiling, but without the rope. I'm an ex-smoker. Well, a non-smoker. No, an ex-smoker since about... Uh, Jelly, I want my torch back. Oh. That's my flatmate. She's my best friend.